I am from Phoenix, Arizona. He is so good. He is such a good father, and I didn't know that. I was molested. I was hurt by men. I was battling in my mind. I was dealing with so many spiritual generational crap and I was unaware of it. I had no idea. He had me so blinded. I was feeding into the lies, but I was desperate. And so we got here the first night, the spirit arose and it just was like, we had to go through a, a healing thing because I did not trust men. And that was what kept me from not being able to encounter the father's love. And so, um, I couldn't trust men, which is why the spirit manifested, but it wasn't, I wasn't being set free. So that was the first night. And I just wanted to be hungry. Like I was gonna get set free. I was not gonna go back home the same. And so we came back the second night yesterday and I wasn't even in the prayer line. I was just sitting down. Um, and so if you're not in the prayer line, the Lord's gonna touch you. It doesn't matter where, but. I was sitting down and I was so hungry for that freedom and just for it to be gone and for me to be able to hear the Lord and feel him. And I was sitting down and one of my really good friends was able to spot out that I was manifesting and it was something was not right. The spirit took over. I was not even aware, like I couldn't control it. That was not me. It took over. It started skidding on the floor, just out of control. And some gentleman, I don't know who it is, but he asked it to identify itself and it yelled trauma. And it made sense because I had been so blinded by it and so hurt in the past. And so when it manifested, I knew that the moment that I got here, I had to forgive and I had to let that stuff go. I had to give it to the Lord. I couldn't bring it with me if I wanted that full deliverance, the freedom. And so that it just manifested. A spirit of suicide was in there that I wasn't even aware of. And it made sense because I, I married and there would be times that I would look at women by themselves with their children and I would never share these thoughts, but I would say, Lord, I could only, I always felt like my life was gonna come to a short stop. And it wasn't because I was killing, I was uh, attempting suicide. It was because I couldn't see in the future. And so um, there was a spirit of suicide. There was a spirit of lust um, along with, of course, the trauma. He set me free. Man, I, I, I understand what, why he was fighting so hard because that love I have for him now, I was so, anxious before that spirit has been casted out but I was so anxious to come over here and the only verse I could remember was God has not given us the spirit of fear but a power what is it love and power and a sound mind and I kept declaring that and that is the only reason I'm able to stand here and share that with you guys because the Lord Almighty he he's he's here and he's He's in here. He's my father. <laughs> Amen. You have received from God. You, you came here. You were desperate. You did not leave this place until the spirit of God touched you. You came up and you touched the hem of his garment. You were desperate. What is your advice for people who are here today who might be watching us online? How can you encourage them if they're facing some similar things that you have been through? There is an enemy that is fighting to come after you, but you have to remember that the Lord Almighty, if you think the power of the enemy is strong, that compare, that does not compare at all to the power of Jesus Christ Almighty. His power is, it is just so overwhelming. It's so overwhelming. Whatever the, the enemy has, that's nothing, that's nothing. And so if you recognize that there are, st there are things in you, thoughts that are not of you, that just sound like they're not, be hungry, be hungry, be desperate and, and just surrender. Don't try to fight it yourself, surrender, give it to the Lord and seek Him and He will meet you, He will meet you.